Well, welcome back to another Kafari video with me, Matt. This time I'm in something a little bit different, as you can probably tell already from the pictures and thumbnail. Hopefully you can hear me quite well because this is not one of the most refined cars that I've ever driven. But what's interesting about this particular car is it's mine. Yes, I've just bought this weird and wonderful little car and already it's won me over because of its quirky nature and just back to basics driving. Again, I hope that you can hear me because one of the things about the Twizy is it's not really a car. It's actually classified as a quadricycle or a heavy quadricycle on the V5. So therefore it doesn't have some of the creature comforts that you'd expect of a car, perhaps of this sort of value. So talking of which, this car when it was new would have been about seven or eight thousand pounds. And at the time when Renault was selling them, you had to have a battery lease. Now the idea of the battery lease was simply that they would warrant and guarantee the state of charge with the battery. The idea being that if you had any deviation from around 75% or less, then you had the ability to send the battery back to Renault and they'd replace it. Now, this particular car I've bought is a used car. It's nine years old, and the guy that I bought it off had actually purchased the battery outright from Renault for a small fee. I think it was around £1,000 or £1,500. It wasn't a great deal of money in the end. But what's really interesting about the car is, as I say, it's not an actual car, it's a quadricycle. Therefore, it's completely back to basics. There is no power steering. There is no brake servos. There are no door locks. There's no air conditioning. There's not even a radio. It's completely at one with this little automobile. And I absolutely love it. Most of the people that have seen me driving it think I've completely lost the plot and gone crackers, but I really, really love the way it drives. I think it's quirky looks are really charming and for everyday commuting it's the perfect little vehicle for me. Now I spend quite a lot of time commuting to an office about 25 miles away from where I live and with that in mind I'm just stuck in traffic, I'm following other cars on average doing about 40-45 miles an hour which is precisely what this car's very comfortable to do. The claim top speed is around 50 miles an hour, 55 miles an hour, and that's made possible by a very, very small electric motor that develops 17 horsepower. Now, the onboard battery is actually just 6.1 kilowatts. So again, the claimed range from Renault when they were new was around 60 kilometers. So again, real world of about 35, 40 miles in our, our money here in the UK. So actually it's very usable for the everyday commute. But if you want to go anywhere further than that, then it becomes a little bit challenging because the battery pack itself, an onboard charger, only uses a household three pin UK plug, domestic plug, so 13 amps. Now, the guy I bought it from had actually bought an adapter for it that converts a type two public charger to a three pin. So I can use public charging, but the challenge being that the charge times are still exactly the same. So you're looking at about three hours to get it from zero to 100%. The beauty of having something that can be plugged into a household plug though is if you're going to friends, family, a destination that hasn't got public charging, then all you need is a waterproof extension cable or plug and off you go, you can charge the car overnight. And with such a small battery pack, you can benefit from using the overnight EV charging tariffs that I already use for my other car, meaning that this car would actually cost me 35p to charge up. Now, yes, it's only got a small battery range, so 35, 40 miles for 35p, but that's still in line with my other vehicles, which means that it's about a penny a mile. 
which is absolutely phenomenal. So the overall cost of ownership is exceptionally cheap. With road tax being free, because it's an EV, and car insurance being well under £200, when you put on top the cheap servicing, the fact that this is only a few pence to charge up, it makes it such a great value, little commuter. So as I mentioned, there's no creature comforts in this car, and that includes no heating. The benefit you get with the car is that there are no doors as standard when they were first launched and there was no windows so a door was an optional extra you could buy these sort of slotting windows which is what this car came with but I've, I've since renewed those for these perspex wraparound units that are actually supplied by Renault in Korea so I had them imported and they come with a neat little hatch so that you could open a sort of a window for those McDonald's and drive-through runs and it seals them at the, the edges here to keep it all tight. The challenge being it makes an awful lot of racket when you're going along, as you're probably experiencing right now, because it's just plastic and it's rattling along. But I'd rather that than have the elements coming in, the rain and splashing from other cars coming by, so it makes a lot of sense to have it. So some of the other features of the car that obviously are very much in line with a normal EV is the fact that it's got regeneration as part of the braking system. Now it obviously helps to recuperate loss of energy to put back into the battery and obviously helps to assist the brakes and that's really quite necessary because as I mentioned earlier the brakes are non-servo assisted. So you've got to have extremely strong calves and uh, have a lot of confidence actually in the braking ability of the car because Again, it's not designed to be going at 80 miles an hour, but even when you're doing 45, 50, you do suddenly become aware that you're gonna to have to do some planning ahead and a little bit more firmer braking than you would do in another car. And in fact, to the point where, when I get back in my other cars, I send myself almost through the windscreen because I'm not used to having to do so little force on the brake pedal. But as I said, being back to basics motoring, it's a lot of fun and it just, it's different and I like the fact that it's quirky and people pay attention to it and they point at it and perhaps they laugh, some are smiling, I've had people filming me as I'm going by, people beat me and bib me as I'm going past, you know, it's a car that brings a bit of joy to people and I think that's quite nice in a world where we typically don't say a lot to people these days and we're all too busy with our lives, it just makes it a lot of fun and I really enjoy it. But I guess if you're a person that wants to be inconspicuous and not draw attention to yourself, then this really isn't a car to own because everywhere you go, people will be looking at you and everywhere you go, people will want to stop and ask you questions about it. And I think that's the irony about this particular vehicle is whilst it's been out since 2012, it's something that you very, very rarely see, particularly in the UK. They were kind of more of a car for the European sunnier climates. So here in the UK where it's often raining, you're just not likely to see these cars. And I think that's a real shame because for a lot of people it makes complete sense. But I guess there's this worry and fear, a bit like range anxiety, that it's not going to be suitable. And when there aren't that many in the country and there aren't many at dealers to go and test drive, you've got no real way of knowing whether this car's going to fit your life or not. And I was kind of in a similar place when I bought this. And when I thought about buying one of these four years ago, the salesman actually talked me out of the car because he said, you won't enjoy it, the whole novelty thing will wear off and you'd be much better with a Renault Zoe, which is what I did. Now, I think he did himself a disservice and the brand is a disservice because the car has a need and it suits a purpose. And I really think this car is probably up there with some of the best commuter cars that I've had or, or bikes. And it's just something that you have to experience. So if you're watching this because you're thinking about getting one, the best thing to do is try and find one locally and go and drive it. Except that it's not a car, except that it is a quadricycle, so it's effectively a motorbike with a, two extra wheels and a roof over it, and then you won't go far wrong. But if you're expecting this to be something like a Tesla or you know a Hyundai 
a Ford, Mackie, whatever it is, you're going to be very disappointed because, yeah, it's not got any of those creature comforts. And yes, it does sound like a milk float because the motor is not the most refined of units. It's very agricultural and when the regen kicks in, it's not particularly progressive either, as I'm just demonstrating now. But one of the best things that I did was research this car and with the power of YouTube, like you're watching now, you can find out a lot of information about things. Now, I watched a, a great channel and a, a great guy, Andrew Kirby, and he does a lot on his channel about his Twizy that he's owned for a number of years. And having studied his channel for a little bit, I realized that there's some great aftermarket bits that you can buy for these, as well as some really cool guys out there that are doing tuning and firmware updates for these cars. Now, Andrew recommended that there's a unit you can buy from a guy called Kenneth, and he's based over in the Netherlands area. And he was basically taking the onboard software and retuning or remapping it via a, a box that plugs into the OBD unit. Now he's developed an app for it as well. So you can either buy a plug-in box or a control unit that uses Bluetooth. And I decided to go to the Bluetooth unit so I haven't got this extra thing sat in the window. But what it enables me to do is actually reconfigure the regeneration on the car. So now it's no longer just a very mild regeneration. I can actually set it in a parameter from zero to a thousand, making it completely one pedal driving, which is really useful, particularly if I want to eke out more energy and make sure the car conserves that energy for obviously those days where I'm up hills or in bad weather or using the ancillaries. So it makes a lot of sense. But another little bonus is that you can retune it. So you can either run it in a lesser power mode or you can put it into what he's calling sport mode, which gives it a lot more torque. Now, if I remember rightly, it's then giving it an extra 50 Newton meters, which is a lot when it's only around 50 or 60 Newton meters a stock. So pretty impressive and whilst it's not going to do a 0 to 60 sprint particularly fast, mainly because it doesn't do 60, it does make a marked improvement when you want to get away from the lights quickly. So it's more of a, I guess, a traffic light Grand Prix car. It can zip away quite quickly and it just gives you a bit of confidence when you're coming out of roundabouts and things like that. So what else haven't I talked about? Well, I think I've covered the basics because it is basic and there isn't really much to say inside. You have lights and indicators, wipers, or wiper, should I say, and a little button down here for the drive mode, which is on the dash. And that's about it, really. Um, you've got a sliding seat, and one of the things I've perhaps forgotten to mention is this is actually a two-seater. Despite the fact that I look like I'm sat in a little fighter jet, there is a seat behind me and by pulling the seat forward, you let people in and out, and on, you can comfortably get an adult in the back. They do have to straddle the seat, legs each side, and there is a gap for that, but it can be done, and my wife and I have used this car to pop to the shops and do a quick little run in and out of the supermarket to get some, uh, some needed essentials, and it does work. And there's a little tiny cubby in the back so you can put the charging cables and a first aid kit and all that stuff in there as well. So that all works really well. But I guess if you were trying to carry anything more, then it becomes a real challenge. And actually today, doing the filming, I've had to completely strip back my usual gear and equipment list. And as you'll know, if you've watched my channel before, I've generally got a lot of gear on board when I film because I use a 4K cinema camera, a DSLR, a series of action cameras, multiple tripods, electric slider and all sorts of stuff which will fill the average boot on a car. And with that in mind today, I've had to really strip back as I've mentioned. So I'm down to a couple of action cameras, a DSLR and one tripod. I've got to hope that by the time I come to the edit process that I've pulled something reasonable together for you. So please give me a little bit of grace on today's filming because it's not the easiest to do when you haven't got all the essentials for filming. Once again, regardless of being a day for filming, I'm having a lot of fun driving it in the sunshine, 
it's so much fun on the road because you can move it about really quickly and easy. It's so agile. It's like a little water boatman. You know, it skims around the surface really easily. And that's what's really fun. You can throw it into a corner and it will come out the other side relatively stable. But it's just a bit of a hoot. And if you want something that's fun, you can nip to the shops in or do your local commuting, then why not try it out? I think you won't be disappointed. And it's a car that you'll probably keep hold of. And it has a bit of personality. It's a bit like the family pet. I feel like I need to name this thing and it needs to have a human name. But I haven't quite got to that yet. And I'm hoping that my daughters can assist at some point. The best I can come up with at the moment is Twizzy Rascal. But I'm being told that's not particularly cool anymore and my kids will laugh at me. So if you've got any suggestions that are appropriate, obviously drop it in the comments. But hopefully you've enjoyed today's video and you've enjoyed the footage and the walk around of it. If you've got any questions about the car, obviously drop me a message in the comments. If you've got any other queries about the car, check out Andrew Kirby's channel, look him up on YouTube. He's a wealth of knowledge on this car and he's been a driver and owner for a number of years and I'm quite in awe of all the things he's done with it because he's very talented when it comes to doing electronics and things as well. But as I say, thank you for watching. If you haven't already subscribed, please do so. It really helps me to reach out to other manufacturers and people for loan of vehicles. As without that growth, in subscriber rate people really don't want to talk to me but if you are watching and you have subscribed thank you again and I look forward to seeing you in the next video like it if you enjoyed the video share it if you loved it and subscribe if you'd like to see more